Hi, my name is Miranda Gray, and I'm an international author and teacher on women's energies and the menstrual cycle. Thank you so much for these interesting questions to answer. The first question is, what do you think is the importance of first menstruation? First menstruation is the sign that we're changing from a girl into a young woman. And this contains many different levels of awakening and change. In the early years of our lives, our energies are focused on linear growth, on growing in size, and on growing a personality and an understanding of how the world works. We're emerging from the depths of the soul out into the light of the physical world and creating our sense of self in contrast to the world around us. This is the maiden archetype stage of our life, where we're experiencing linear growth from the inner world of darkness into the outer world of light, from subconscious and instinctual thinking into the intellectual and reasoning world. And then we change. Our hormones start to change, building and declining like the tides, like the face of the moon and like the breath. In each phase of this cycle, we change. Our physical energies change, the dominant way we think, our abilities and skills, and our need for expression and interaction with the world. Now we're no longer growing from darkness to light. Now we spiral, increasing in light, expressing the light, increasing in darkness and expressing the darkness. We become a cyclic woman, holding the energies of a different female archetype in each phase and expressing her presence and energies through our interaction with the world. We have four ways to perceive the world, four ways to understand things, four ways to create our lives and our purpose. First blood is the sign of our first step from being a linear child to becoming a psychic woman. But this step is just, not just one of change in our body and in our sense of self. It's also a realization of the soul's path for this life, to experience the world on all levels through the four female archetypes within a human body. Female archetypes are universal. And so as they flow through us in their cyclic dance, we're experiencing the same dance as the cycle of the seas, the land, the moon, and the stars. In this dance, we embody the cycles of the sacred feminine on earth in human form. The powers, insights, and abilities the cycle brings are a gift for humanity, for the survival of our species, and for the creative, creative growth of our species. It's a gift that is given at first menstruation, but this gift has a time limit. In our menopause years, we will change again from the spiraling dance of our cycles to rest in the comfort of oneness. The second question is, what inspired you to write your book, Red Moon? Red Moon was the outcome of a very personal journey to try to find out who I was and what it meant to be female. In my early 20s, I was working as a freelance scientific illustrator, and it became very obvious to me that how I felt, thought and behaved depended on the phase of my cycle. I would have a week when I had very good attention and good stamina, and I would work late into the night. And I was also super confident and would take on more work. Then I would have a week when I was productive and my social life was important, but it would be followed by a week of declining stamina. I couldn't work long hours. I was emotionally sensitive. I lacked confidence in my abilities and I canceled work. I was often in tears. Finally, there would be a few days when I couldn't motivate, my, motivate myself to do anything. I couldn't work. Even getting out of bed took a tremendous willpower. I thought there was something wrong with me because other women seemed to manage their cycles okay. Since I was very young, I've always felt a connection to the Divine Feminine and I was illustrating projects on mythology, tarot and folklore. I knew that women in the past would have recognized the changes in their cycling bodies, 
and their oral traditions and teachings would have been handed down through myths and nursery stories. So I started exploring the mythologies I was working with to look for womb wisdom, a lineage of information that helps us to understand our female energies and our cyclic nature. I was looking for a language, both in words and in images, to help women to understand who they are and to express who they are. And I found the echoes of the menstrual cycle in the stories of women and goddesses who change and in the stories of the maiden or virgin, the mother, the enchantress and the crone or hag. I found the image of the sacred feminine as the cyclic woman. In Red Moon, I wrote a story about a young girl on the night of her first menstruation because telling stories is a natural part of my creativity, but also because in a story, we process information at a deeper level. And not only do we experience the information as reality within us, it can also transform us. So I hoped that mothers would use it as inspiration for creating their own stories for their daughters. And maybe a teenager would read the story even if she didn't want to read the rest of the book. The third question is, what do you think is the best way to guide children through their first menstruation? I think the best way to guide young girls through their first menstruation is to be a role model of a cyclic woman throughout the whole of their childhood. Living in a home where their mother dresses differently because of her face, cooks different food or does different activities depending on her face, who says when it's not the right face to do something, but knows when it will be, gives children an understanding of our cyclic nature, creates a normalcy to living every day in a cyclic way. And it also shows children the empowerment of being true to ourselves. A child can notice the smell of our blood as they sit on our lap. We can show them the bright red blood in the moon cup. We can use animals and moon phases and seasons and cartoon characters to describe ourselves. And then with first blood, they can choose their own images and words to describe their experiences. In a family where the household is cycle aware, first blood becomes a family celebration. There's no embarrassment because the menstrual cycle has always been a natural part of their lives and of the relationships and activities around them. A household can be cyclic and secular, or it can be cyclic and spiritual. But either way, first blood acknowledgement and celebration brings acceptance, affirmation and validation, all experiences which will lay strong and positive foundations for the challenges of adolescence. The fourth question is, what message do you want to convey to girls with your book? My books are more focused on empowering the women in a girl's life to understand themselves so they can be role models. In my recent book, Living with a Menstrual Teenager, the focus is on understanding the archetypes within young menstrual girls and on validating this nature within them. Women find it hard to think of themselves as cyclic beings, let alone their teenage girls. But what would happen if we realized that our moody daughter was not just moody, but was instead in a situation where her current archetype wasn't being allowed to be expressed or not having her needs met. We would be able to think of ways to support her, to create circumstances that did support the archetype and let her express her amazing energies. And then if we acknowledge ourselves as cyclic and our daughters as cyclic, we can see that conflict may occur just because our cycles are completely opposite and our expressions and needs are completely different. We can then ask ourselves, 
how do we create a home and a relationship in this merging of phases which meets both of our needs plus the world's demands on us? My vision is always for future generations, where girls have been brought up by cycle-aware women who were brought up by cycle-aware women. By helping women to explore and understand their menstrual cycle and their cyclic nature, my hope is that their cyclic lives will teach the blessing, the wonder, the creativity, the joy, the power, the spiritual awareness, and the beauty of a soul expressed that the cycle gives us. And the final question is, how do you describe the creative process of writing as a cyclic woman? That's an easy question to answer. It's chaotic. It's fluid, exciting, driven by the soul, and with intellectual moments of pure insight and deep spiritual moments of inner knowing. To write as a cyclic woman is to write using the enhanced and dominant perception of the archetypes as they appear in the phases of our menstrual cycles. We can use the heightened intellect of the pre-ovulation maiden phase to create structure, to edit text, and to research ideas and background information. Our motivation to write can come from the goal of having the book published. Then, in the ovulation mother phase, we can use our emotional thinking to write with empathy and to find connective language and relational images that create feeling in the reader. It can also be a time when motivation to write is empowered by a feeling of sharing knowledge, helping someone, and providing enjoyment. In the premenstrual phase, when our subconscious is dominant, we have the amazing gift to open to inspiration, to write with poetic words and detailed imagery, and find meaning and patterns in ourselves, in others, and in the world. This can be a time of enormous creativity, and so much of my work has been written with enchantress energies. And our motivation at this time can simply be the soul singing with delight at the creative process. Then, when we finally withdraw at menstruation into the crone archetype, our creative processes don't stop they just go deeper. We may not have the words flowing from us as they did in the premenstrual phase, but instead we now sit with our vision. We feel our way. We ask, is this book true to the vision I hold? We feel our answer and we change our direction if needed. There is no motivation because there is no need for motivation. We just know that this is what we are meant to do. The phases also affect our physical energies. So we can write late into the night during our maiden phase and perhaps only manage an hour of writing in our menstrual phase. And of course, the moon and the seasons affect our writing as well. When I write about the crone, it can't be in the summer because her energies belong to the darkness of winter. To write with the energies of the archetype is to embody her and then writing becomes a service and a prayer. Thank you so much for these questions. I hope you have enjoyed the answers.